I'm Hannah. And I'm Doa. We're student scientists at Cornell, and welcome to the Battle of the Backyards. Just outside your door, plants are growing and surrounded by threats. Not only do they have competitors from all sides for light, space, and nutrients, but they also have to defend themselves from hungry herbivores that see them as a scrumptious meal. Plants must constantly be defending their juicy stems and leaves, nutritious seeds, and sweet fruits. Animals that eat plants are called herbivores, and they come in all sizes. With all this pressure, how do plants avoid getting eaten? Plants have a full range of plant defenses that target different types of herbivores, and they do so all without moving from the spot where they're growing. Plants use physical defenses to prevent herbivores from getting to the leaves, chemical defenses to make the leaves taste bad, and indirect defenses, such as bodyguards, to protect themselves, all so that they could stay alive for long enough to spread their seeds far and wide. Everyone is familiar with the most common plant defense, spines. Spines and thorns are everywhere, from the prominent thorns of roses to the inch-long spines of cacti. So why are there so many different kinds of spines? The way it works is pretty simple. Big thorns for big animals and small thorns for small ones. Imagine that you are a big plant-eating mammal trying to take a whopping bite out of a plant covered in spines. Ouch, it hurts. No one wants to get thorns stuck in their mouth or in their skin. That makes sense, but can't small herbivores like caterpillars just walk all over the plant anyways? I mean, they could just slip between the thorns. That's a good point. For smaller herbivores, plants have to use a different strategy. You may have noticed that the leaves of many plants, like lamb's ears, are soft or fuzzy. But this is actually a plant defense. The little hairs on leaf surfaces are actually called trichomes. They block the insect from reaching the edible surface. Some plant hairs simply block insect eggs from reaching the surface, but others are a little nastier. Close up, many trichomes look like little hooks that can block the herbivore's access or even cut them. Spines are a good first line of defense for plants. They repel herbivores and physically block animals from getting to the edible parts. Other plants have waxy leaves that are slippery when insects try to climb all over them. It also makes them taste bad. Can you imagine eating a crayon? That would be disgusting. Ew. Physical defenses work well to defend plants against some herbivores, but not all of them. So plants have some other tricky strategies up their sleeves. One of these plant strategies is to use chemical defenses such as repellents and poisons. Repellents are chemicals that are emitted from the plant. Herbivores are able to recognize that these repellents are really bad for them. Once an herbivore detects a repellent, they know to avoid that plant. Basically, repellents are a plant's way of saying, I taste bad. You're gonna get really sick if you eat me. Stay away from me or you'll be really sorry. Is that why garlics are so stinky? Exactly. Skunk cabbages, for example, get their name from their smelly repellents. Even some plants that smell really good to us use these repellents, such as lavender, mint, or sage. Another way that these chemical defenses are used by plants is to poison creatures that are trying to eat them. This is such a cool defense mechanism because plants use poisons that are directed towards specific herbivores. To resist getting eaten, a lot of plants have evolved chemicals that make them taste really bad to herbivores. Think about some of the related plants that we eat, like broccoli, cabbage, mustard, or kale. All are crucifers and all of these plants have evolved to produce chemicals that repel herbivores. I love mustard on my hot dogs. Are you saying that mustard is really a plant poison? Yeah, mustard is really poisonous to a lot of animals. But in the mustards that we eat, the intensity of the toxicity has been bred out. So it's okay for us to eat them. But in some mustard plants, the chemicals are so strong that they can really burn an animal's mouth or really upset their stomach. Another defense is having a sticky and gluey liquid called latex in the veins of the fruits and leaves. When the herbivore goes to take a bite out of the leaf, latex spills out, gets stuck in their mandibles, and makes them stick together. A common example are milkweeds. How do you think milkweeds got their name? It's because the latex looks like milk. 
Milkweeds are particularly interesting because they have the bitter gluey latex as well as strong chemical defenses that can make many animals sick. But some other animals, like monarch butterflies, are attracted to these. They're called cardiac glycosides. Once an animal gets sick from eating a plant, they know not to come back for more. So the plant has successfully defended itself. Some insects, however, have outsmarted the plant by trenching the leaves. This wily specialist caterpillar is carefully biting between the veins to drain out all of the latex so that it can eat the ends of the leaves where there is no latex left to defend the plant. Some plants protect themselves by hiring bodyguards. Plants can do some pretty tricky things like hiring part-time bodyguards only when they are under attack by an herbivore. A common example is a tomato. When a tomato plant is under attack by an herbivore, like a tomato hornworm, as the caterpillar chews on the plant, it causes changes in the plant itself. Two things happen. First, the plant produces more chemicals to repel the insect. Second, the plant reacts to chemicals in the saliva of the caterpillar and responds by sending out chemical signals calling for help. Small parasitic wasps smell these chemical signals and fly to the plant to help defend. These wasps lay eggs all over the caterpillar and their larvae hatch and eat the caterpillar alive. Attracting these wasps are good for the wasps, good for the plants, but especially bad for the herbivores. Other plants protect themselves by hiring full-time bodyguards, such as ants that live in the plants, and protect them from any intruders that are trying to eat or grow on these plants. Certain plants provide homes for shelter and nectar for food for these ants, and in return, the ants fearlessly fight any intruder that's trying to eat them. These ant plants are especially common in Latin America, but ants are really good defenders all around the world. Plants that hire bodyguards are using indirect defenses, which means that they aren't using any of their own physical structures to wound, kill, or repel their herbivores. Instead, they're using indirect defenses to attract the natural enemies of their herbivores. Indirect defenses can be a really efficient way for plants to defend themselves, especially when they're under attack frequently. In the battle of the backyards, plants use all the tools in their survival kits to protect themselves and to stay alive. Some of plants' best weapons include physical defenses like thorns and latex, chemical defenses like repellents and poisons, and indirect defenses like signaling for help from ant colonies. In a world where plants are rooted in the ground and herbivores are crawling, flying, and walking all around them, Plants have evolved many complex defense mechanisms to survive. So go outside, learn and observe how the plants around you are defending themselves. Plant defense mechanisms are essential for plant survival.